Welcome to another episode of FinTech Monthly. This month's instalments is chock-a-block with updates, including Funding Circle's investment round, news of Apple's new wristwatch, and a few expert predictions as to what the election might hold for FinTech. London-based Funding Circle have raised a $150 million round led by Russia's DST Global. The company enables normal folk like URI to put their money into loans for small businesses and has now lent over $1 billion globally since its inception. The small businesses who receive the loans can apply to borrow from between $5,000 and £1 million. Funding Circle want to use the money to consolidate their position in both the US and UK markets. They've still got a little way to go until they can compete with the big boys as traditional British banks lent £167 billion to small businesses last year. The new Apple Watch has started something of an arms race, with fintech companies large and small releasing bespoke apps for Apple's new timepiece. To name check only a few, Tesco Bank will allow users to peek at their balance, YoYo will enable you to make contactless payments in shops, Scrutify will let you interact with your stock portfolio, and Prism will make it possible for you to pay bills directly from your wrist. With Bloomberg predicting that Apple may shift 14 million of these watches before September of this year, expect feedback for the new apps to come thick and fast. P2P Lenders Assets Capital have raised $3 million following a successful Cedars campaign. The round is the second largest in the history of the platform and contributes to Cedars reputation as being the place to raise money for crowdfunding sites and P2P services. Now that Trillion Fund, Landbay, Crowdlords, CrowdCanDo, Pledge Sports and Assets have raised money using the platform. It's been an interesting few weeks for crowdfunding, with reports emerging that GoFundMe are on the verge of a $500 million round in the US. That would constitute an impressive funding debut for the company that's been bootstrapped until this point. With the general election bearing down on us, we asked our resident expert Richard Gold of Rag Lawrence Graham & Co. this single question. Which one thing should the incoming government do to improve the UK and make it an even better place for fintech? So I think the main thing that any government that comes in should do is keep the red tape down. If, as I think we all want to, aspire to build the really the, the global fintech hub, then we want companies to come here from across the world because it's easier to hire people, it's faster to grow companies, it's easier to raise capital and importantly, it's easier to get regulated here in the UK. So chopping back that red tape would be my top tip for any government. We're here at Summit, an event that calls itself Davos for the Disruptive. We took the opportunity to ask some of their attendees what the new PM could do for fintech. Please make the whole visa and immigration system, the policy, the application vehicles much simpler. Um, immigration is a vital lifeline for the technology sector and it needs to be much more user friendly and straightforward. The second thing I would ask for is to build on the previous success of the Enterprise Incentive Scheme, which has done remarkably well and is, is frankly the envy of the world. How do we look at an EIS vehicle for later stage businesses? For the UK government to foster an environment which is attractive for a fintech entrepreneur, they really need to have ease of access to capital. Uh, and further, they need to create a regime which allows for the effective deployment and reinvestment of that capital to help nurture a company grow. Uh, I think more than that, they also need to have access to great skilled workers and allow for the appropriate rewards um, to be delivered to entrepreneurs who take the risks to help this country grow and succeed. Robocoin's latest Bitcoin ATM enables users to send money abroad by simply inserting a few notes into a machine. To transfer the funds, all you have to do is slide your money into the hole in the wall and enter the desired recipient's phone number. The recipient can then pick up the money from another ATM or a merchant. Robocoin can undercut traditional remittance providers by utilising the underlying blockchain technologies. The new service, which is called Romit, is available now. If the mood takes you, you can travel to Hoban and try the service out in London's only Robocoin ATM. And finally, HSBC were left red-faced recently after it emerged that a link on their Hong Kong webpage was redirecting users to a porn site. 
The URL should have linked to a competition for young entrepreneurs. However, the resulting page had very little to do with starting a business. The story goes that the link did indeed redirect to the right page until sometime in 2011. At that stage, the link was allowed to expire. It was bought by the naughty website, and the rest is history. That's the lot for the month. Check out the latest fintech news on techcitynews.com. I've been Ben Goldsmith, and thanks for watching.